All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Kevin again with Yerkut Racing. We're back in the garage again today for another one in the LT1 build series. This time around, we're going to be trying to button up the short block. If you followed along in the build before, um, we finished up the rotating assembly last video. Got all that gone. Um, it's good to go. Everything's like we want it. So we just got to put the cam in, degree that, um, time is set, spider in the lifter valley, lifters in, uh, oil pan and windage tray, and I think that should be close to it. Um, I'm going to try to get everything done at least up to putting the heads on this time. If we can get the heads on, that'll be even better. Be one more step closer to the finished up. So that's where we're at. That's what we're going to do, guys. Uh, if you already haven't already done so, take a second to subscribe to the channel. Turn your notification bell so you can follow along with the build, and we're going to jump in. All right, guys. So for this build, we're going to be using the Cloy's Race Billet True Roller set with the Iowa's chain. Alright guys, we got the cam in and we're getting ready to degree it. Um, we got the degree wheel here on the crank. We got our dial indicator set up for top dead center. Um, we're basically, we're pretty much there. Got to make a small adjustment to it. Show you how we do that. So we'll take, and we're going to look right here. We got our dial board gauge zeroed out at top dead center. And we're going to roll it one way, 50 thousandths. We're gonna roll it uh, the other way 50 thousandths. We're gonna take a um, note of where it lands on the dig, on each side of zero. And the idea is that they would be equal on each side. We know we got a perfect top dead center. So let's check it out. Um, I don't really have an extra set of hands. It's probably gonna be just about impossible to show you this all the way. Let's see if I can spin it a little. All right, I don't know if you can see the dial board gauge, but hopefully you can. So anyway, what we're going to do, we're going to spin it, and this is going to come up to zero, I mean to 50. And that. All right, 50 there. And we're at 11 and a half. So then we're going to go back the other way, and we got to go past the 50 and come back up to it. Reason for that is you have top, uh, uh, um, time and chain in there, and that's going to get some slack in it. So we want to make sure to go past it so we can roll the slack back the other way. And if you go past again or something when you're trying to get this exactly on 50, don't worry about it. You can always just go back and do it again. So this way we're on 12 and a half degrees. We'll do it one more time where we roll back through to the other side, see what we have over there again at 50. So you see the needle will come back to zero. We're coming up to 50, coming up to 50. And there's 50. So we got 12 and a half and 12, basically. All right, we're going to make a little adjustment here. Not looking for anything crazy all right so we're coming back past it we're gonna try it one more time we made a slight adjustment to it, our wheel position 
12 and a half. I guess our position didn't actually change that time. All right, made another adjustment. We're coming back up. We're going to check it one more time. It's kind of a, I mean, it's just a process you have to go through. Um, it can be kind of tedious a little bit, but, I mean, this is how we're double checking everything to make sure the can is what we want it to be, where we expect it to be, where the manufacturer wants it. So, fairly important step to it. Just make sure you get it right, is it? Nothing wrong with having to do it a couple of times to get it there. All right, so we're at 12 on this side now. All right, 12 there. Zero. Back up to 50. All right, so we swapped all of it from one side to the other, basically. All right, one more adjustment here. All right, so just about slightly on the plus side of 12. All right, so right there, um, four times the charm, we're within like a quarter of a degree. So, I mean, that's fairly well. It's probably about as good as we're going to be able to get it. Um, so, we're going to go ahead and proceed to the next step. Trying to get something set up down here in the lifter board to be able to make this work. All right, so now that we found our top dead center and verified that, and we have our dial indicator set up on the lifter, now we have to verify our max lift and find the top of the center, uh, top of the load. All right, <clears throat> so this should be around 343, 344. So we're just gonna bring it around Watching our indicator, after it starts coming up, we're going to count the turns past zero. See how many we get. It should have three past zero, and then a little more. All right, coming up, there's one, two, three. Looks like it's stopping at 350, which is a little bigger than it was stated to be. I'm gonna try it again to verify. I always do it a couple times just to verify. One, two, three, three, fifty. All right, so we're gonna come back up. We know our high point is fifty. Everything is consistent there. That's gonna be the top of our intake load right there. So now we're gonna come down. 50,000 on each side of that. We're going to get our measurement and see where we're at. All right, so we got 68 and a half. Put that in the calculator. And that's 145 and a half. That's 214 divided by 2. It's a 107 center line. All right, guys, so I finished degreeing the cam in. The center line right now is at 107. Uh, the cam card calls for 106. Not too worried about the one degree. I think our adjustments on our timing set will only allow for two degrees um, adjustment. So we're going to leave it where it's at for now and continue on with the process. I wanted to show y'all one thing, though. Out here yesterday, let me flip y'all around. So yesterday, we sprayed this stuff with the oven cleaner on the intake manifold, and it's kind of doing its thing. Um, so basically, we're going to go over now and clean it off, try to see what it looks like, but pretty crazy how it looks at the moment. So.
let them get inside your head. They'll tell you what to do. In my All right, guys, so we're sitting here. Uh, we got pretty much everything put on that we can put on for right now. Uh, we ran into an issue where um, I thought I could get the gaskets pretty quickly. Turns out I had to wait several days to get them. So they're on the way now, but uh, probably won't be here with the holiday until about Thursday. This now is uh, Monday. I was working on a Sunday night, kind of hit everything that I could do. So uh, basically once the head gaskets get here, we can throw those on. And I did run into one more problem, which is why I haven't put the front cover on and the oil pan final installed yet. I just threw it up there to kind of keep the bottom end covered up. Um, I'll take you out here and show you what we got. There's some uh, issues with the intake manifold and the timing cover. Um, I followed, let me push it around. I followed some advice I found on another YouTube channel. I won't say any names just because, you know, it's one of those deals um, I actually took and sprayed oven cleaner on the intake manifold and the timing cover um, I started cleaning them both up best I could but that stuff has lye in it and what I would advise is you do a lot of research on lye and aluminum before you start messing with it trying to clean it up not really sure if it's because of you know how long it was left on deal Maybe you could spray it up and rinse it right back off and it would be okay. But this set a little bit longer. And I'm going to flip you around and show it to you. But it kind of, this is a lot better now than it was. But at the time, it left a lot of white, kind of chalky material on the intake manifold. So it also really darkened the intake a lot this was a raw aluminum intake before and I mean it just made it really dark so uh, unfortunately I didn't just clean the outside but I tried to clean the inside and this was one that I had um, went through and ported and I haven't been long ago finished you know and everything inside was basically pretty daggone clean to start with so I mean, it's a real kind of a major setback deal to be faced with having to go back and redo that again. Um, I took the wire wheel to the timing cover, so most of that is looking pretty good. Um, I got to put new seals in it, but it's not exactly where, where I wanted it to be. All right, guys, so with that being said, I've wanted to take the opportunity for a while to pick up a sandblasting cabinet, and I've just haven't really done it but anyway we're going to take this opportunity to go, go to harbor freight pick up a sandblasting cabinet and give it a go see if we can you know maybe clean this thing up with that hopefully it'll work um, if not i do have a another um, lt1 intake manifold that i can start back over with and do that but i really i really don't want to pour another one right now so anyway hopefully this thing will clean up in the cabinet um, that'll probably be the next video um yeah so anyway that's what we're doing guys um, i hope you enjoyed the video if you did give us a thumbs up um comment down below if you got any questions for me or anything like that and um yeah we'll catch you on the next one thanks